here. Six one two.
leaping in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. I am going to meet you, I'll meet you over there, and they hold me on the sky. Start singing, you will hear, never heard by mortal ears. So glorious I do. Yeah. 
know what happened, but uh, I had a call from Monday to Tuesday. It was bad, not too bad. Wednesday, I was okay. Thursday, I was okay. So I went to work, came back. Friday, I was okay. I went to work and came back. As I was driving back from the train station, I just realized that I wasn't hearing the sound of other cars while I was driving. So I didn't have to hear what was happening. Then I got home, come out of the car, going to the house, my right ear had already closed. Uh, so I mentioned those that were in the Bible study yesterday, and uh, uh, I was praying for. And then around 1 a.m. in the morning, I started hearing some pops, you know, of the air opening up, and uh, it's half closed, half open. <laughs> so I want to thank you so much for your prayers. It's most great for me to be here. So as a result, I managed to make changes to the family plans. I was supposed to have driven our visiting pastor. And I was supposed to have had fellowship with him while driving up here. But uh, because I, I realized that it was this call, that's why I put the mic away so that it would come to make this one a bit better. So I didn't want to pass this to him. So we had to make arrangements. I want to thank our precious brother, Masimba, for the way you picked him up from the hotel. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. And for the pastor to come to pick me and my wife so that I could be avoid driving. My wife was actually, uh, she said, I'll drive. She was keen to drive, but uh, the brother had already made other plans. So I, I said, no, let's just go with what has been planned so that we can just rest a bit. Amen. Amen. I'm so happy to see you all. Congratulations to our brother for, for meeting his partner.
When you are doing missionary work, you are always in the will of God. That's right. So I want to encourage you to press on. And in this day we are so blessed. We are going to have spiritual food. And then afterwards we will also have a bit of fellowship in the natural. It is not only the Lord Jesus Christ who would do after preaching and say, uh, give them some food to eat. Uh, we do that also. Amen. So today is one of those days. Yeah. After the preaching, we are going to have time to fellowship. I don't want to waste the preacher's time, but uh, allow me just to read the scripture. We will pray. We will hand over the pulpit to our visiting pastor. You don't have to stand up. I am just reading this scripture so that uh, uh, we can invite the minister. Ephesians chapter 4. A verse that I love the most when I'm talking about this minister. The Bible says from verse 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why did God give them? Why did God give all these gifts? You don't just give gifts for the sake of it. If you just give gifts for the sake of it, I am inviting you to change the way you give gifts. You must give gifts for a purpose, with a reason. So God's purpose for giving us all these gifts, He says in verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come into the unity of the faith, Praise the Lord. That's why the, the scriptures I love. You know, it does not say till we all come into the unity of, you know, how we see things 100%. But if you have got the Spirit of Christ, that can be united. It says here, coming to the unity of the faith and all the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, the Lord, the church of a perfect man, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. When we are now with Christ in us, then it is no longer us that is living. Christ will have built himself a tabernacle that is one place to dwell in, which is you and I. When he comes and dwells in our soul, then we are rapture ready. Then we are not just you know, living by chance. We know that at the appointed time, at the appointed season, at the appointed clock, when the clock of time is ticking, one of these days we are going to hear Mama Ibu. One of these days we are going to hear our names. One of these days we are going to hear the scream, come home. And we shall be caught up with those that are resting. Amen. How many believe that scripture? Amen. So that's the purpose that we are doing these services. And that's why we also, when we hear that a brother is visiting and uh, is of good report, we, we don't say we have never heard him preach. We say, as long as it is of good report. Amen. How do you tell that someone is of good report? The Apostle Paul says, let me go to John. Um, there are people that are of good report. So there is nothing to be afraid of. There are people that God has given us that are going to bless us. Amen. I think it's 3 John, there's only one chapter, verse 12. It says, Demet Demetrius has a good report of all men. Demetrius, a uh, good report of all men. So when I was told by Pastor Mepi that, hey, Pastor Adelaja from Nigeria is coming, it was, we were talking face to face because I visited them on their prayer meeting last weekend, last week on Wednesday, with, uh, Pastor, uh, with Pastor Joseph uh, Olufemi, who was also visiting from Nigeria. So he said he's going to come, he's coming on Tuesday, we'll be with him Wednesday. Would you be able to receive him? I said, Brother Adelaja Francis, it is the one that I know, whom I have seen preach on the, on the screen, uh, where I come from in Zimbabwe. That man is a man of a good report. Amen. We must have him. So that's why we have him today. So he falls in this scripture. He's got a good report of all men. Praise the Lord. And so I was preaching for one of my friends, Pastor Gerald Gondora, and he has passed through many. Uh, 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 brothers, uh, but if you find the men preaching at uh, some of our churches back home in Africa, there are thousands. Mm. But I've seen him preach at conventions where there were 10,000 people in Mutare. Mm. Yeah, those numbers. So my wife, the one who's on the phone, right, brought you there. Mm. She she comes from Mutare, 
So we have never met you until today, but we know you. Because your words are following you. To Aberdeen, we we have a, a wonderful uh, wonderful people that live in Aberdeen, and some of them have received the message in Aberdeen. Some of them they came with the message already and delivered, and uh, God is working. And we want to thank you for coming. It's, it's not about the numbers, but the love of Christ that is in your heart. We say, may God bless you and thank you for coming, because we want to preserve our time. Let us just rise to our feet. Um, I don't know, Brother George, maybe you can lead us a chorus. Maybe welcome, welcome, I don't know, something like that. Then we invite the preacher to come and take the place. Just a chorus. Then we invite the minister to come and take the place. The Messiah is the King of Kings. The Messiah is the Lord of Lords. The Messiah is the King of Kings. The Messiah is the Lord of Lords. The Messiah is the Lord He is Lord of Lords. The Messiah is the King of Kings. The Messiah is the Lord of Lords. The Messiah is the King of Kings. Hallelujah. The Messiah is the Lord of Lords. The Messiah is the King of Kings. The Messiah is the Lord of Lords. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. The Messiah is the King of Kings. The Messiah is the Lord of
place like that. And there's not too much of population there. And uh, so, and uh, coming around, and I see the prairie, the mountains, my goodness, it, was, it just looked like I should get a place next door here. That's a bad.
and we realize our lives and our peace and our joy are all about what we decide this for. The key to our peace, our life, our joy, our all lays right here. Even our day to day we live in and running. Even our mortgages, whatever it is, or we keep to it, this right inside this world. If we get this world unlocked, every other thing will be unlocked together. We pray your blessing, we pray your inspiration, we pray your anointing, we pray your grace. The rest of my life, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led of the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards and wandered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bright. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not be born bread alone, but that every word that proceeded out of the mount of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set it him on the pinnacle of the temple. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and, they, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord. Again, the devil taketh him to an exceeding high mountain. And I want us to really look at this last one closely. Every one of them is very rich, but there's this particular one I want us to focus on the last one. The final assault of the devil. And again, the devil taketh him up in an exceeding high mountain. And showed him, I want you to look at it, and showed him all the kingdoms of this world. All, all the kingdoms of this world. My brother Bernard said he showed him New York, Switzerland, Scotland, all the beautiful places, and all the wealth of the world, the fields of gold and oil, everything. Amen. That's exactly what the prophet said. Uh, he showed him all, there was nothing international, he showed him all the kingdoms of this world. And the glory. He didn't show him the slums and all those things. Mm -hmm. He showed him the glory, something that can be used to tempt you. To, something that can be used to, to tempt you. Somewhere. Okay? Show him all the glory of them. And say unto him, All these things will I give you. If thou wilt fall down and worship, the book of Luke says, Bow. And worship. He says, fall and worship. He said, bow, but I will fall down or bow down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get your hands, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. The Lord and his blessing to his Lord in Jesus' name. This little time that uh, for this little time of fellowship that we have together, for this little time that we have together and uh, fellowship of this evening, I want to call your I want to call your attention to this very to this part of this scripture here. I want us to I want us to look at something very, very vital, very, very important here in this scripture here. And uh, maybe from there, we are going to go to a thought for a subject that we will be basing our thought on for this, uh, uh, for this evening. And uh, I am thinking here by the grace of God 
to talk to you on what the prophet, on what the prophet is. I, I just lifted up the statement from the prophet and I call it the devil's, the answer to the devil's question. Oh. Amen. The answer the to the devil's question. Amen. Yeah, because as we are going to see, the devil has got a question for everybody, young or old. Young or old, male or female, you understand? Weak or strong, it doesn't quite matter. But in order to get our thought crystallized to that point, I would like us to look at something here. Uh, what kind, what kind of a, what kind of a businessman do we think this guy? What kind of a businessman do we take this guy to be? This guy, the devil. What kind of a businessman do we take him to be? I want us to take a little look at who we are dealing with here. This, this guy, this guy, the devil, or who later became the devil, that originally <coughs> He was not, God never made, now listen close, God never created Satan. Amen. He never made created devil, he created a cherubim. And he's called the son of the money, which is called Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Lucifer became perverted to become Satan. God actually does not create evil in the sense of creating evil. There must be evil. Every creation is a program. For you people that write codes and computer and of computers and stuff like that, you know, you've got to have the idea within you before you can bring it out in physical, in literal manifestation. Amen. There is no evil. You've got debt in you to cause debt. Amen. You've got to get what is in you, what is not in you, cannot come out of you. There is no evil in God. There is no unrighteousness in God. What God made was an anointed cherub that covered, which was made his right hand man, which was Lucifer. Now, Lucifer, just like you develop your computer programs and things like that, and it develops maybe a virus. It doesn't mean that you make the you were the one that caused it to develop it or something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, what God created was Lucifer, but Lucifer lost his estate because of greed and lust Amen. for power and beauty and wisdom. Right. And he became perverted to become Satan. You understand? And, 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 and that's exactly how that's exactly how it is. In the book of Ezekiel, sorry, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, 14 you are going to see it is written there. We get all of the book. Now, I'm calling your attention to this. What sort of a man, what sort of a businessman do we take this man to be? This man that the Bible said, he said, the, of, uh, it was written of this man Lucifer. Of this man Lucifer, it was written. He said, down in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, verse 12. He said, Thou art the anointed children that cover it. That's right. And the Lord had made this so. The Bible called Lucifer the anointed children. He said, Thou slept up the sun, full of wisdom. He said, He, Lucifer, sealed up the sun, full of wisdom, and was perfect in beauty. Mm -hmm. Now, if God would talk something like that, He was somebody that's full of Still of his own, full of wisdom mm -hmm. and perfect in beauty, as described in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28. And coming over, that was who he was. And coming over to Genesis, chapter 3, the first encounter that mankind, listen now, that was in heaven. The first encounter that mankind had with this angel called Lucifer that became the devil. The first encounter that man had with him was in the book of Genesis, chapter 3. Verse 1. And the Bible said now, and if you go to the book of Revelation chapter 12, if you also go to the book of Revelation chapter 12, verse uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, 
verse 9, and also you, if you put Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, and uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, you have, a, you have a fair idea of how the Bible describes this particular man called Lucifer by the man that became the devil that we are dealing with now. Now, if you put it two together, now the Bible said, the first encounter that mankind has with this man called the devil was in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. And the Bible takes us to understand there in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 that it was the most subtle. That's right. Yeah. The Bible tells us there are all certain that is called use, that is called the devil and Satan. And the Bible says he was the most subtle of all the beasts of the field. Now this was he was a he was what I want to bring out to you from there is he was a terribly smart fellow. Mm. He was also a smart. And then I want to ask you now, and I, and I want to ask you, <clears throat> I want to ask you, what if if he, he was not a fool? I want to let you understand, he was not a fool. The Bible says he was full of wisdom. He was very sad. The, his first encounter. Now let me remind you of this guy. He was so smart. That's right. That even angels, listen up. According to you go to the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 3 to 4. Now the Bible said that he was the one that was described as the, as the red dragon. That's and the Bible right. said his tail, which is the story he told. To the angels, he drew he made two, about two thirds of the angels in heaven fair. Now, these angels were not people like you and me that go to work and go to sleep and do all those activities and things like that. This angel, listen now, this angel, please, let me your divine attention, please. Just, just put these things down. You could note those things down. You are not going to, uh, your Bible is going to be with you all the time. Okay? I'm not going to be with you all the time. That's right. So you, you, you just put those things down, note them down. If you can, it's recorded. So you can just extract the, the passages and just please let me just focus here so that we can get the maximum benefit of the little that we have today. That's right. We're going to be together. Just, just suffer me for this brief time. I, I guarantee you by the grace of God, I ain't gonna take your time. Absolutely, I'm not take your time. So, I'm not worrying you by the grace of God. I just want you to, I want us to fellowship and be in the same spirit, okay? Amen. So that we will be the same. Okay. Now, listen. Now, I am saying, this man, Lucifer, was such a smart fellow. He was such a smart fellow. It's not the kind of learning we go to learn in school. It's a kind of understanding that was naturally, it was a given to him as a gift from God. That's right. He was almost like God. He was so, until angels, those angels, they stand in the presence of God, 247. If there's anything like that in heaven. 247, they were not like you. You now, you're going to go home, I'm going to go home, we're going to rest, we're going to eat, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We spend, look at it, the time you and I spend in church and for the peace of God is not up to 5% of your time in a whole week. Amen. You don't spend, how many hours do you spend in church? Very short, very small. Very little part of our life Amen. is given to God over anything spiritual. The most of our time are consumed by us. That's right. That's what we believe. But I want you to understand this thing. There were angels that were in heaven. They dwelt in the presence of God. All the time they were in the presence of God. This man called Lucifer is so smart that his wisdom and his anointing. The spare of his anointing and his wisdom. Hallelujah. Even angels that stand in the presence of God all the time could not stand his lies. They could not stand his wiles. The Bible called him wild tricks. Amen. You understand? The Bible called him wild tricks. Amen. The, not even angels that stand in the presence of God were smart enough to complete it. Amen. He flowed about two thirds of them. Hallelujah. And brought them down in millions. In fact, wow. in new in wow. Wow. He brought them down. He told them his tale. He ministered to them and they get them. Even though they were in the presence of God all the time, they got confused. Amen. And they were chatting. They got confused and started thinking that why should we all be serving God? We should also give honor to 
out of the devil. Don't, 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 don't lose it. <laughs> he should get what he does. The fact God alone should not deserve the honor. To not deserve the honor of worship. Hallelujah. How, how could the devil convince people that were permanently in church? Mm. Wow, wow, wow. People that were permanently around the throne of God, mm. not around a human puppet. Mm. <laughs> not around a human puppet. Oh, yeah. It was not a human being preaching to them. It yeah. was Jehovah God person yeah. that was on the throne. And they were looking at it like this. They were looking at it like this. Worshipping in his presence all the time. And yet the devil deceived them. Wow. Hallelujah. His anointing was so captivating. That's right. His speech was so powerful. He was so irresistible that as they listened to him, they fell for it. That's right. He is so smart. And that was the way he was with angels in heaven. And when he landed in on earth, and he confronted our first spirit, he brought them to the ground. Wow. In one minute, in few minutes, discovered Hallelujah. that he was on the ground. That's yeah. right. In one minute, discovered he knew exactly where to hit. Brother Brown said he knew the human nature so well. That's right. He was part of the fellow that he was the one that had perverted the nature of man. He knew where to touch. In few minutes discussion, earlier he has flawed him. And after flooding him, he used him now as a tool to get the other that he knew he could not directly get. That's right. Nobody taught him what this person. That's what the Bible said. Having sound wisdom and understanding, that is the kind of fellow we are dealing with. That's right. You remember when he was to confront Job many years later? You know, he told God. Job said, Have you considered my son? Job is perfect now. Said, I said, Oh, of course, why not be perfect? You bribed him to serve you. You gave him. Look at him. He's healthy. His wife is not married. He got good job, nice food. He got everything. What? Why will I say God? He accused God of using blessings to bribe Job to, uh, to be faithful to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he said, you know what? Brabram said, you understand what the devil did? You know that Satan knew about human nature. That's right. He said, let me touch his properties. Yeah. Amen. Oh, amen. Listen, listen. These are the very things that make you backslide. Mm -hmm. When just jobs are not working around, mortgage is not going, you begin to feel where is God with me? 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 Where is it was because everything is fine. Oh, he said, let me touch the substance. Amen. And I will prove it to you. Human beings be who they are. They only serve you because they are doing well. They don't love God. They love God's favor. <laughs> There's a difference between loving God and loving his blessings. <laughs> so he, he it is because he did it, but he, he, he gave you all of these things. He said, Let me touch him. God said, Okay, you know what? Go on there. Why? Mm. Bro, bro, say what he told God then means watch, watch his move. When he first of all started wrecking Job's companies, bro, sir, he started tearing to pieces Job's businesses. He started wrecking it, wrecking it one after the other. He made it and he made it in such a rush, such a talent, mm -hmm. so as to cause a consternation, mm -hmm. so as to taste it and bamboozle with him mm -hmm. and confuse him. Amen. Amen. You know when calamities begin to fall, mm -hmm. one after the other, you get confused. And when Job was still standing, you know the last thing he did? I want to know how smart this guy is, how dangerous he is. Mm -hmm. He went and told God. He said, you know what? Don't you yourself God know, God, that all that 
a man has, he will give for his life. Yeah. Don't you know that he will give everything for his life? Hmm. After all, if, if you put gum to somebody's neck and say, hey, your life or your or your or your or your or your car. We drop you the car, right? Oh yeah, your life or your or your or your house. Yeah. You drop everything. Yeah. You see, yeah. man will yeah. give up anything and everything to save his life. Mm. He said, because he said, so allow me to touch his health. Uh -huh. yeah. Allow me to strike him uh -huh. on his health. Uh -huh. When his life is under threat, Brother Brown said, that shows you he knows so much about me. Mm. That is the same devil me and you are confronting tonight. Amen. 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 You know how mistaken? We are confronting full-time devil with a part-time Christianity. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Is a little 
beast of this world. Wow. Amen. He showed him everything. He showed him all the beauty queen. Yes, sir. If you think you want to be you are pretty and you want to demonstrate beauty, look, he showed here, he showed Jesus Christ beauty queen is far beyond you. That's right. Amen. That's right. He showed all. Oh. He didn't tell him with a fraction that you are laboring for. Mm. He gave him what? He said, How many of these will I give you? Oh. 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 He said, All these will I give you. Amen. If you will do what? Just do. It's a very simple thing. Just do. Bow wow. and worship me. Bow in worship. Mm. What? 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 We got a pretty good lesson here. Does it make sense? Pardon me. Does it make sense? For me, the day you see me, let's say I own this full of this abandoned here. All the land. All the oil. I understand this is your oil, oil region. Huh? All the land, all the oil. Huh? You know how much it is to just get one apartment to buy? To buy one apartment. You know what it costs? And I now have all the land, all the oil, all the house, everything. Everything. And I said, I will give you if you just hand over this song to me. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Who does that kind of business? I don't know why you are getting my point. Does it make sense? No. no. Just like say, I will remove this mind. Can you get uh -huh. And I will give you, if you will give me, if you will give the whole of Scotland, I will just exchange it. Who does that kind of exchange? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Who does that? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of business is that? Yeah. Did you think this man called Lucifer to be a fool? Yeah. To own the whole world. Mm. Hmm? Wow. And offer willingly, not a baggage, mm. to hand it over to the Lord Jesus Christ mm. for just a while. Amen. Amen. You know, you know what the issue is? You know what the issue is? It is you. Please don't miss this. It is in you and me that don't know value. It is you and me that don't know what value. It is you and me that don't know where real substance lay. That's right. And you and me. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce it. 
Some people in this world are called the elites. Right? Why some other people, the vast majority, are called masses? I'm sure you've never studied it. Elites. You know the meaning of elites? We use it, we don't even care. Problem say our generation like dancing on bubble dancing. Our generation love is a generation of bubble dancers. We just dance on bubbles, you know bubbles on top of them. We see foam. If you step on it, it gets not in there. We like to bubble dance. And we don't dig under to see the depth of what is under the bubble. That's right. That is why we bubble dance a lot. That is why we don't know substance. Listen, this, this world of people are called elites. You know why? Check the meaning of elites. You know what I mean? It is the enlightened ones. Mm. 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 Elites come from the world light. That's where they come from. Yeah. Those that have been enlightened, mm -hmm. whose eyes have been opened. That's right. Those that know. Those that have the secrets mm -hmm. of this world. Yes. And the rest of you, there are few people, and they are actually called the ruling class. Uh -huh. uh -huh. They are very few. It's a club. What it? And the rest of the people, you know what they call you? Masses. <laughs> Go and check the word mass. Anything that occupies space <laughs> and have weight. <laughs> Not is anything that occupies space and have weight. That is why they give you the form what they call for you. They give you a social media. Uh -huh. Which is not real news. And social media is where a lot of you give yourself all your time. Amen. To protect your social media. That's right. It's meant for light folks. Hallelujah. Amen. It's meant for rich crafts. It's meant for light folks. That what they tell you then. And uh, Beyonce has just bought a ring that is worth ten thousand dollars and so. <laughs> and so. And so. Those are the kind of things you do. <laughs> This this musician, this footballer, he just he just bought he buy, just he just landed this bossa, he just landed uh, uh, this thing, he's gonna be paid hundred and twenty million twenty thousand pounds. Oh, wow! And then you know, and then the wow 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's right. This is why they call you masses. You are yeah. call you followers. Oh, this thing. Yeah. One time, one time I was listening. Somebody told me something. You know what? Don't ask me a question. He said, Have you ever seen Bentley, Lamborghini, Ferrari being advertised on CNN and television and other places? On social media. He said, Have you ever seen it? Yeah. I said, no. He laughed. Mm. He said, because those that drive those kind, they don't watch those kind of things. They don't sit down. They make news. They don't watch news. <laughs> that is why right. what they give you is called mass media. Oh, wow. Media for masses. <laughs> Amen. Media for the weak minds. Oh. Media for the plebeians. Yeah. <laughs> Media for the plebeians. Engage them. Mm. Let them be, take their time for foolish things. Mm. Then that is why they give you labor congress. A part of all of you are laborers. Labor, labor, labor. And labor is one of the factors of production. <laughs> that is why as far as you are a factor of production. You are Everybody that are in the House of Commons are with us. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, come, I mean the House of Commons. Yes, that's true. Who is the common man there? There is no common man there. Yeah. Everybody you see there are not common, but they have to use that name because they know your masses only live with nomenclature. <laughs> What's the package names for you? <laughs> and do a lot of painting. Yeah. They keep you busy. And your mind is occupied for weak, beggarly elements. That is what St. Paul called the beggarly elements. He said, let us live away from all those things and go into perfection. That is going to something great. This is why young children will not come to church. This is why a lot of you are not going to be serious. You come to church and you behave as if you are something great. And you are talking about Bible here and I'm above that. But you will stick your neck watching trash. Amen. Yes, sir. That's right. These other ones are called the elements. Amen. They are the enlightened ones. Amen. They are the administrators. Amen. They are the ones that rule you and make laws for you. And every law they wake up and make for you, there's nothing you can comply. Mm. But if it is your God that makes law for you, you want to challenge God. Mm. Oh, why should I come and explain to me? Why should I come to church every time a week? Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord. It's very nice. Wow! Human beings on earth don't know value. That's, That's right. right. Those that know value, they know the word. Amen. That is why. Amen. In the days when Jesus was born, mm. you know, you know, there were many wise men from the East. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Hmm? We have unconsciously and yet stubbornly. Right? Redefined life on earth to mean what? Daily struggle to live for survival. You think life in Scotland, life in the UK is about daily struggle to stay alive. Amen. And that's number one. I want to say how we, we look at life. And I'll prove it to you. We define life as what? Daily struggle to keep alive. And once you succeed in staying alive, then the next agenda is to struggle and fight tooth and nail for ease and comfort. What are you working for? Ease and comfort. You just want to be comfortable. You just want to be at ease. And when, you see how today, I want to see how this life imprisons us. This is our definition of life. This is why we go to school. This is why we study. This is why we struggle. This is why we marry. This is why we draw things. We want to stay alive. One. And once we are succeeded in staying alive, the next agenda is get strong for ease and comfort. Or we sum it up. Some people prefer to call it happiness. Mm. See, looking for happiness in life. Mm -hmm. Which means you struggle to be at ease <laughs> and comforting. <laughs> so you keep running every day. That's right. This is why you wake up very early by four, five That's right. night. This is why you run the whole day. That's right. You are not running because of God's kingdom. Let us be honest with us. You did not wake up because of Jesus. <laughs> no, 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 Jesus is the, is the father rest. If I have time, any time that is left, God help us. I will consider him. You didn't wake up for God. You didn't study for God. You didn't study for life for the cause of God. You were struggling under struggle to be at peace <laughs> and to be comforted. Nah, and when nah, you have nah. gotten that ease and comfort, now you know the next agenda? You must sustain it. <laughs> <laughs> Maintain it. Maintain, Maintain it and be sure <laughs> God forbid you get to the Nigerian problem or <laughs> God forbid! Whenever you look back to where you are coming from, there's poverty behind you. What? <laughs> Your motto is the gap between me and poverty is never wide enough. <laughs> <laughs> that is why no matter the amount of money you make, you don't rest. Mm, that's right. I'm telling you, when you make a thousand, you want to make a million. Right. You make a million, you want to multiply it. Because you're always afraid. This thing can try. <laughs> <laughs> then you come around and plug it into different sectors. Yes. You put it here, here. If, if this one fails, this one will not fail. Yes. At the end of the day, you end up not being able to sleep. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You live in a prison yard invented by yourself. <laughs> That's powerful. Hey. That is Life is the chain of self. Mm, you are the worst enemy of yourself. That's true. Amen. 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 Oh. Because the problem is with a man. Amen. You've never understood that. That's why you have problems in your marriages. It's all about self. It's all about self. The wife is always thinking about self. And the husband is thinking about self. And when you take two, two selves, <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> when you take two selves and join them together in a play in a house and force them to be inside one house, they fight. It becomes they against each other. Who is going to be supreme? You, that is why you and your husband are in competition. They fight for supremacy. They fight. Their life become complicated. <laughs> That's 
Amen. Amen. You are not waking up for Jesus. Mm. You are not working for God's kingdom. That's right. It's not God's kingdom that brought you to Scotland. That's true. Amen. Hey, God, let's be honest. That's true. And you are sitting by me and praying. For this, I want to have got that comfort. Like I said, you God engaged in how do I maintain it? Yeah. Please, mm. I return. <laughs> Amen. I want to enter the battle of sustainability. That's right. That was a lifetime. Mm. You fight it all the days of your life. Mm. Until it's time to go. Mm. So yeah. at the end of the day, what have you achieved tonight? Mm. You know what you do? No wonder the song right now don't. Must I go and empty handed? Does my dear redeemer meet? Amen. Not one day of service given. Must I empty handed go? Oh, must I go and empty handed? Must I meet my savior so? Hallelujah. Not one day of service giving, lay no trophy at his feet. Have we done his work? Have we done his work? His work is the last thing to do. It's my time. Those that know, this is what the Bible says, those that know their goal, they will know where there is value. That's value right. Is Right. See what we do? The whole of our life is spent serving ourselves. Mm. And when you finish serving ourselves, the new generation of gods, I'm, I'm going to be the, the new gods of the land these days. You know the new gods? Children. Mm. <laughs> they are the small, small gods. They rule, they rule the parents. Anything they want. Mm. Anyhow, they want to live. They dictate. Children know what they want. It's parents that don't know what they want. <laughs> Have you ever listened to a child? She wants something. He cries. And hold you to run something. You get it. You bow to his will. Whether it is good or bad. They know what they want. They go for it. Bram said it. He said, the Bible says, children shall rule their parents in the last days. I will give you the quote if you want it. Mm. He said, the Bible, mm. the last set of gods of the last days are the small, small gods in our homes. Mm. God help us. Who are reckless, they lack control. You can't talk to them and they obey. Mm. They don't know the meaning of obedience. They are so full of themselves. Mm. So foolishly confident. They dictate terms. And the parents, the helpless parents, are at their mercy. When you have finished living for your, when you finish creating the wealth for them, you now invest for them. Instead of investing in them. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. That's Amen. All. There's a difference between investing for your for child and investing in your child. That's right. You invest oh. in your child Ooh. sound in Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God. Yes, you, man. Make, you implant God. Yes, that man. is the legacy. Yes, that man. is the gift. Yes, you put Christ. Amen. Once they find Christ, don't worry, they will find their way. They'll find their way. That's right. Yes, yes sir. They will know which way to go in life. That's right. That don't obey no rule. They rule you. They, you. they can't listen. You cannot say sit down. You sit down. You have that mercy. After all, you will come 911. Oh, what do they call it? We will call police on you. Mm, yeah. And the cops will get you. Amen. So therefore, the hapless parents. 
It's a terrible generation. Mm -hmm. They serve their parents, and now they are serving their children. <laughs> And so they are so bothered. A lot of them are having high blood pressure. That's fun. Who wants to bother Amen. Jesus said, Come on, that's the Lord. Oh, you that live. And I have a name. Thank you, Lord. And I know that I'm still in school. Amen. Let me tell you this message. This church, this message is the only salvation in this country. Amen. Are you ready? Amen. I said this message. Amen. 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 That brought us not brought to this time. Amen. This act is not always unknown. That's this right. is the salvation of this land. Amen. Amen. This is the head. The day this thing goes off this land, the land has made its due. Amen. And the only thing that gave relevance to this land before God. It's just these few people that are holding this thing in their hands. Amen. When they are no longer here, Amen. the whole system will start to collapse. That's right. And God will fold it up. Amen. Oh. God bless you. So, I was trying to say, come on. I was trying to say, at the end of the day, you see how we define life? Will you define it to be struggle for some to some end? Huh? Look at that place. Have you seen a sign at the door? That's a sign of what? Emergency. Exit, huh? Alright? Why was it put? Why was it put there? I doubt very much if this field has ever experienced fire before. I doubt it very much. And that very much has ever experienced fire or flood or any natural disaster. But if you notice every way, they put these things in. You know why? They are conscious that your life is always on that threat. Anytime there's a battle, there's a price on your head, and you're not away. There's a debate going on with you between God and Satan. Who owns you? Satan is wanting to take you anytime. God is keeping you here for you to serve your purpose. And the battle goes on anytime. You know, the most important question of life is whether you stay alive. You know, that's the most, what is important. Anybody that does not live through this service at the end of the day has become a luggage. It has become a liability. I don't know where you understand me. God forbid any one of us drop dead. From that time, we become a luggage. We become a no. What defines every other thing is the fact that you have life. Amen. That's it. It's whether you live at the end of this service or not. This is why they give you, in case of anything, wrong. Huh? In case of anything, if it does say, you do like this. <laughs> because, first of all, we must keep this guy alive. Every other thing is secondary. And when you start living, the next thing is ease and comfort. After ease and comfort, security. You want to maintain your ease and comfort throughout your life and the life of your children and your children. children. This is what we want life to be. But is that life? That is not life. Jesus said, let me tell you this, at the end of the journey, you will find out that what we have spent our life for and defined as life, you and me, when the dust of the battle finally sets, when we finally reach the end of the golden strand, and the dust of this battle finally sets, and we look back, you will come to discover, and I pray you don't wait till that time. Everything you have defined and called life was really not life. Right. They were just details. They were just means of getting fuel to feed this tank. Every one of us carry, carry a small gas tank. Mm -hmm. And if your care is not taken, the Bible says this thing can become your God. Mm -hmm. 
In current time, and we must put a shelter, boat around it to keep it. Well, one harvest like this, I must keep this life. Right? At the end of the day, you will come to find out when this life is over. That the thing that is called life, Jesus Christ said, I am the way. The way. Amen. I am Is called life is in these troubles. That's my life. Amen. Are you getting me? Amen. All that you engage mostly for every day is not life. You will never begin living until you know Jesus and come to Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, I am life. Life is a person. This thing, life is not a verb. Oh my God. Oh my God. Have you not changed your visionary? Is life a verb? Life is not a verb. Life is a now. Life is a now. And if it's a now, it means it's the name of a person, a place, or thing. So life is a person. Life is a thing. Life is a place. The place is Jesus. The person is Jesus. The thing is Jesus. What you are going about every day running around, I is not life. Amen. There are activities that life allows to take place. Amen. There are activities that are congruent as to making the fallen natural life to run in order to be able to serve the purpose of the real life. At the end of the day, we are going to find out the real thing. I'm going to leave you a little closer. I wanted you to know, you know, Right, let me read a quote here for you and then I'll close. Do you have a close grace anytime you have? I'll we'll read a quote for you here. Listen, I said, we must repent and backpedal and change our attitude and our thinking and our orientation from this natural definition of life we have, which is daily struggle. That's what you call life. That's not life. Life is Christ. Christ is life. Any other life that is not lived about him and for him and by him through him, you are not living yet. Amen. That is why Jesus said this. The woman that takes lived in pleasure is dead while she lives it. Somebody can be dead and is still walking around. Amen. A lot of souls that don't know God, they are dead. The soul is dead and don't know Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if anybody knows God and knows Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. Anathema means cursed. The Lord is coming. And may I say this? I may never see your face again on this world. The message is, whether this world likes it or not, Jesus is coming. Amen. Amen. That's true. He doesn't take excuse from you. He doesn't discuss it with you. That's right. You don't need to agree. Amen. Amen. That's powerful. He doesn't Amen. matter. Amen. The important thing, the, you know the interesting thing about truth? Truth does not need your agreement to become true. Amen. 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 Truth does not need agreement. It doesn't need consent. Amen. Truth is truth. Yes. Before you arrived, it was true. While you are here, it is true. Right. After you leave, it's truth. You met it and you will leave it here. Mm-hmm. You better cooperate with truth. Mm-hmm. And truth is a person. Mm-hmm. And the person is Christ. Mm-hmm. Any other life that is not about Christ is not living. Mm-hmm. So what you know, brother, you will come to find at the end of the day, the greatest and the biggest job you have done in your life. Is this something you can be there for us, Jesus? Amen. So you must do it with all your heart. Amen. Whatever that you are going to sit down and listen, sit there Amen. and listen and support the church and the pastor with your presence. Amen. At the end of the day, the roll call, God will bring down your roll call. Amen. And you will come to realize you were absent. Mm. When it matters most. Wow. May you not be absent when it matters. Yeah. Let me read this quote to you 
and then I can look with it. What I'm saying, I said at the end of the day, you're going to find that the real thing about life. Yeah? This is, this is a uh, 90 minutes past four now, so I'm good. Let me let you go here. I say, you're going to find out that the real thing about life is the word Christ. Amen. Say, someone said the other day, he said, Brother Brennan, listen, why is this? This is the message, the Act, paragraph 87 to 89. So someone said, Brother Brennan, why is it that this happens and that happens? Well, he is sitting present now. I was eating at the table. And I said, Sister, come back. Come back. Somebody was asking me, what? Well, look at my life. This will happen. That will happen. You know, some of us, there's always troubles. Look, this will happen. That will happen. Why this is not right? This is not me alone. Why is it not me? The prophet said, hey, hey, hey. I was thinking, I was thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, sister. Ah, ah! Brother said, hey, hold it. He said, chuck it. Hold it. He said, come back. Listen, he said, come back from all of these things we are talking about. He said, come back to where? The beginning. In order for God to be able to deal with our issues, God said, in the beginning. That's right. I said, the first thing that the person was, before anyone was, anyone is, before there was one cell of this body, they were spirit. Listen, we have this erroneous perception. You were not a body that was given a soul. You were a soul that was given a body. Amen. That's powerful. Your body was, you were not a body. Yes, sir. Go back. The spirit of man was created first. Amen. 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 Go hard man before man had body. Amen. How come now that body becomes man? You get me? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and man before he made a body for him. Amen. Before he made this one, there was man. After this one has gone, there is still man. Amen. Let's go back. There is man. After his likeness. Listen. Before there was one sin, there was a spirit. That is the fundamental part. Hmm. Keep that spirit all right from everything that that spirit, from everything this way, everything that way, they will perish. Listen. Whether it is houses, legs, homes, heads, beauty, Education, anything, everything. Amen. They will perish whatever it may be. It is perishable. It will go right back to that spirit again. You will finally return back to that spirit. Amen. Listen, hallelujah. And right back to that spirit again. So keep that spirit. Amen. No matter what you got here in this world. Amen. Amen. Or what you haven't got. Amen. Uh, 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 uh. No matter what you got or what you haven't got, mm -hmm. hmm? keep your heart right in tune with God. Amen. Everything, all your houses, your lands, all your money, all your sickness, even your sicknesses are perished. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. Your sickness is not eternal. No, sir. Yeah. It cannot be permanent. No, sir. Amen. Amen. Right. It cannot, sicknesses cannot, you know how foolish, how foolish we become? Mm -hmm. Because we got sick and it's paining us so much, we now begin to take our sicknesses the same yesterday, today and forever. Oh, no, 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 no. Your sickness is not the thing. Amen. It cannot be the same. Yes, it's not going to go worse or it get better. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And if it will go worse, it will end. Amen. That's right. So you've got to understand it is not eternal. Mm -hmm. And it does not have it for a moment. That's right. And you must tell it, this too shall pass. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good. No matter what, your health will go. All your children, everything that you've got here on earth, everything will leave you. And you will go right back to the beginning again. If that's right we go, if that beginning is right we go, which is the spirit, you will come forth again, just as certain that there's God in heaven. That's in the resurrection. It is, if it is not right with God, you are going to take the other route. 
Listen. I'm closing here. I told you. I'm closing here. But I said, listen. You are here to make a choice. That's right. For Christ. He said, what? I'm reading that one. I'm coaching you. You are here. You know why I was sending you on it? It's to make a choice. For Christ or for self. Amen. All the work. Let us make that choice today. For Jesus Christ. And it will be well with you. It will be well with your heart. Well with your church. God bless you.
Are we investing for them or are we investing in them? I mentioned last Sunday, I said, let us invest in our children. And the Holy Spirit has picked it up and has emphasized it again. We mentioned here last weekend what in the upper team we said, where is that true value of a soul? The value, the truth of value, the value of a soul is thousands, ten thousands. The prophet says ten thousands worlds. But how come we don't put value there? We don't put value even in our own soul. So I also say, Lord, help me. As our pastor will pray for us, let's all we'll pray also in ourselves. Pastor. Dear Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus. We realize time is fleeting. We are not us. We don't have an eternity to make these terms. Our time is so fast spent. It is only a closing time. Not only for this service, but for life itself. The kingdoms of this world will soon be closing to us. We don't want to be found wanting, we don't want to be found naked. We don't want to be found empty, though. And so the word of grace, the word of mercy, the word of salvation, the word of truth has come to them, given to them. I know that a number of them have seen it, they have seen the picture of their lives, and they are raising their hands for them. Lord, I am up to Lord, hand it to mercy, Father. God, the mighty Lord will please, I pray you for this soul. You know for those that are not raising their hands, please, Lord. They need that need to, please, Father. They need to, they don't even understand, Lord. They are still trying to figure things out. So, Pastor of Daniel, Holy Spirit, follow after every soul to the homes. May you make that bed like that of in, um, the, uh, Jim Cobb's tomb and make it uncom until, uncomfortable until they turn back to the Lord. Grant it our Father. Let everyone here, every child, every adult, everyone be fully surrendered. If the whole of this little group in Aberdeen is fully surrendered to you, what a wonder you walk in this city. Grant it, Lord. Bless my soul for this purpose. And in blessing you, bless the ministry and the work of our brother here in the city. And your grace be with us. Let us expand it together in the future. We keep in humble and sincere truth to the word, truth to the cause. In the Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Let's just appreciate the Lord.